All right. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, it's noon right now, but you may be watching this at any time you choose. So welcome to our Student Family Services webinar this afternoon focused on high school programming for the 2021-2022 school year. Our goal today during this webinar is for families to feel informed about the process and timelines for scheduling for courses for next school year. And today we are joined by some of my absolute favorite people in the whole wide world. So we have our amazing high school counselors, Sarah Tice. Um, she focuses on students with last names K through Z, ninth through 12th grade. And Mr. Caleb Chambliss focuses on students with last names starting with A through J, ninth through 12th grade. We also have our Director of Program Development and Outreach joining us today as well, Ms. Christy Gabbard. And um, so as we go throughout the webinar, if you have questions that arise, uh, please make sure that you type them into the chat or the Q&A box, and we will make sure to address them at the end of the webinar. So I'm going to pass it over to Caleb and Sarah. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, we just wanted to have an opportunity to do this prior to meeting with your students so that way you knew what was going on and had time to discuss with them about their plans for next year because I think sometimes it feels a little quick uh, and this way you guys have a little bit of lead time that you can go over this and feel comfortable with what the process is and what they're selecting for next year. Uh, we've got a couple slides we want to go through and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. So if you put questions in the chat, just um, bear with us. We'll answer all those at the end of the presentation. So the, the first thing we wanted to go through is just the timeline. Um, because it, it may seem crazy, we're already thinking about next year, but we are actually getting ready to go next week. We're starting going into classrooms. So we're going to start going through English and um, social studies classes. If your student happens for whatever reason to not be in an English or social studies class this semester, and we will be messaging them individually in Canvas and asking them to set up an appointment with us. So we'll still have the one-on-one -on -one, um, meeting with them, but it will just be um, set up at a different time since they won't be one of those courses. Uh, we are starting with the, the rising ninth graders. So next week we'll be going into Mr. Bourne's class and into Mr. Mundorf's class to do like a full classroom presentation, kind of getting them ready for high school and walking them through this process. And then after we present to them, we will over several days meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. So it will actually extend into the second week of March. Again, if for whatever reason they're absent one day or we miss them, we will reach out to them individually to schedule that time. And then for our, our current ninth graders and 10th graders that are rising into 10th and 11th grade, we'll start meeting with them second week of March, also through English and social studies classes. And then our rising seniors will meet with the last um, week before spring break, the, mark, the week of the 15th through the 19th. We will have posted on our Canvas and also on our website, the updated course guide and the updated forms. Do not look for them yet. They are not there today, but they will be up there probably by the end of this week. So if you're seeing this live, give it a couple days. Uh, and then you can go through the updated course guide with your students to see what's being offered. You can go through the course selection sheet and see what specific electives are being offered to their grade level. Um, and then once we meet with them in class, they're going to give us their choices. And then after we've met with everybody in April, we will send home a printout with what is actually in the computer, what they've requested in the computer. And that's a great time for you to go over with them and make sure they selected the things that you guys talked about. If you see anything that needs tweaking, you can reach out to us and we can make those adjustments. Um, but it's really important if we can have those sooner than later, just because Right now is when we are picking how many sections of each class, what teacher is gonna teach this class. So the sooner we have the correct information, the better off we are of making a master schedule that's gonna meet everybody's needs. Um, real important, because kids sometimes get caught up and say, but this is my first choice, this is my second choice, this is my third choice, and I didn't get it. Ideally, you're gonna get your top three choices or your top four choices, but sometimes for a variety of reasons that doesn't work, maybe a class gets cut, Maybe it's like super popular and your kid's in ninth grade. So the seniors and the juniors and the sophomores are gonna get access to the courses first. 
So please make sure that they understand it is not a guarantee that they're going to get their top choices. We're going to do everything we can, but classes do fill and we do kind of give priority to the seniors all the way down. So if they don't get something as a ninth grader, they're going to have three more opportunities to try to pick something. And then in May, um, students that are thinking about having a virtual period during the school day, uh, this is not a new thing. We've been doing virtual contracts for several years, but the deadline for that is going to be May 10th. So we will also post the latest version of the contract up with our other programming materials. So again, not today, Wednesday, but probably like end of this week, early next week. Uh, and so if your student does not come home with that virtual contract after they've met with us and you decide that they are going to do something virtually, they will need to produce that contract and return it to us by May 10th. Once we have the contract, we can go back in and drop the request that that is gonna fulfill because the, the virtual class during the school day is a fall and spring commitment. So it's taking two spots in their schedule. So something to think about when they're trying to balance what they wanna take. And then the last day of school, May 27th, if they're like making any last minute changes, we really ask that we have those changes before school ends. Because again, the sooner we know, the more likely we can accommodate those things. So. Just remind your student if they've talked to you about making some changes or if their interests have changed, please make sure we have that information from them before the 27th. Anything done after that, it's really tough to try to accommodate that. So please make sure that they, they feel solid with what they've selected. June and July is when schedules are actually being created. Um, Mr. Chambliss and I don't work 12 month contracts though. So if you do reach out to us in the summer, you're probably gonna be waiting a couple days, maybe even a couple weeks for a response because we're not, always here but part of what we're doing in the summer is creating those schedules if there's a major issue with your child's schedule you may be getting a phone call or an email but typically based on what they've given us for requests we can go ahead and work those out and get those finished up over the summer um, again if they come to us in june or july with a change we might be able to do it but probably not so just tell your kids try to think about all that before we get out of school Students that are going to do dual enrollment next year, so rising juniors, rising seniors that might be interested in dual enrollment, they typically have their advising appointment with their Santa Fe or their UF advisor in the summer. So after they have that advising appointment, it's up to them to reach back out to us and let us know what courses we need to drop out of their schedule because we're going to build them a full PK schedule until we actually know from them what they're taking and what needs to go away. We had some kids this year that were upset that they were still in classes at PK and they were dual enrollment students, but they didn't follow the procedure and tell us what they weren't taking. So if we can just have them after they have that meeting, send us a copy of the schedule over there and very clearly say, drop these courses, then that way we'll have them all squared away, ready to go at the beginning of the school year. And then August, August is when we finalize those schedules. Any last minute new students coming in we meet with, just kind of get everything wrapped up. Students should not expect to receive their schedule until the first day of school. Occasionally, there may be something that comes out earlier, but please ask them not to email us asking for their schedule because we are working up until the very last minute to make sure everybody's in the right courses. And it would just really help us along if we don't have to stop and respond to those emails. And I think now Mr. Chambliss is going to talk about some typical schedules that students take to just kind of give parents an idea of what to expect. Exactly. Um, thank you, Ms. Tice. So we wanted to start off going from ninth grade and going up. Um, so when it comes to the sample schedules, these are typically what a what the grade level would look like for their courses. Um, we're gonna start with ninth grade and move to 12th grade. So as we're going, like as soon as the student comes into ninth grade, they are, they are going to be put in English one, geometry honors, biology, as well as world cultural geography and the critical thinking class. Um, those are all required classes that we're looking to have each, each ninth grade student go into. And then they're able to have three electives they can they can choose from in their preferences. So they can start or continue the world language. Um, they can start on their PE credit, as well as um, doing the performing or fine art credit. And in regards to PE, there's multiple ways you can get this specific credit. One is through doing HOPE, which is one of the classes that we offer, of course. Another way is doing two years of a JV or varsity sport. And if you do those two years, you will sign a form um, that is from the student, the parent, as well as uh, 
our athletic director, uh, Coach Barrett. And then once she signs that off, she'll will receive that form and then we'll have that, that credit waived. When we say that credit is waived, that does not mean you get a credit for it. That just means you don't have to fulfill the requirement for PE because it's fulfilled another way. Um, so if you don't see an added one credit for hope or whatnot, that's the reason why. Um, and the last, and the last way you can do it is if you do a year of band plus take the personal fitness course through FLBS Flex. So those are the ways you can fulfill your PE requirement. Um, and then specifically for ninth graders, you'll be able to select three elective courses um, and five alternatives. Um, just please remember to rank them one through eight. Um, one Ranking one means that this is your most preferred class that you'd like to get in. And then eight is like, I was still, I don't mind taking this class, but it's my least preferred. Um, as we were saying before, um, Ms. Ty's requests are not guaranteed. Just imagine it like a wish list. Like I would love to have these particular classes. Um, however, I'm aware that I may not get everything I would want at this time. So, but you will always have chances, especially with our four by four block schedule, you'll have chances um, to take these in future courses. So that's a sample for the ninth grade, um, ninth grade uh, schedule. We'll move on to 10th grade. 10th grade, you'll continue in the progression. You'll go into English two, algebra two. You can go into chemistry honors or anatomy, as well as you'll be taking world history, either AP or honors. And as a 10th grader, you'll have four elective spaces to be in. You can continue in your world language, PE, performing art, fine arts, or exploring the CTE program. Um, you can find more of that um, in our course handbook or ask us questions if you have them. Uh, making sure you're on track with the PE requirement if you haven't started thinking about which, which route you're looking to go. And then, like we're saying, just rank them in the way that you'd like them to be ranked. As for 11th graders, all 11th graders will be going into AP English language. You either go into pre-calc, math and college readiness, or probability statistic honors. And then you'll have your third science elective. Um, most times our 11th graders have done the basics of what they need for science. And so they'll be able to progress into any other science they wish to have. And then you'll be put into the US history AP or honors course as well. And then the pattern continues by your four elective spaces and making sure you complete those other general elective requirements. Last one is for 12th graders. So you're going into English for honors or you'll be doing AP English literature, whichever one you would request. And then for math and science, you would have already completed your graduation requirements by now. However, um, you can still and you can still take an additional math or science elective because it is it looks better if you are college bound. Um, it is not required um, because you already finished your graduation requirements, but it, it is preferred for college bound students. Then for your social studies course, your last one is economics and government. Um, the way this is set up in student schedules and student schedules are you'll have the first half, for example, if you're in the fall semester, you have the first half of fall doing economics and you have the second half of fall doing government and all of that will equate to one credit. So just keep that in mind when you start thinking about uh, the social studies class and how that's input into your schedule. Um, and then you'll continue on taking your research, the senior research course um, during your 12th grade year. And we'll make sure any other electives that need to be put in are in in regards to graduation requirements if you haven't already done so. Um, but again, just a final note, um, please make sure you're keeping in mind number one, rank number one is your most preferred and number eight is your least preferred, but you're still willing to take the class. Um, and these are requests, not guarantees. Um, so imagine it like a wish list. And so the last piece we're gonna go into is virtual school and I'll give it back to Ms. Tice. Okay, so some students, for whatever reason, potentially because it's a course that we don't offer, choose to take a virtual uh, period during their school day. And again, in order to be able to do that, students must have their contracts turned in by the May 10th deadline. We will have it up on our PK website. So if you explore the website, right now you're not going to see the current links, but they'll be up there shortly. If you go under academics and then school counseling, it'll be under the programming piece. So you'll see the most updated course guide, you'll see the most updated programming sheet so you can see what's offered to each grade level, and then you'll see this contract. Just real important that kids keep in mind there are certain deadlines they have to maintain to be able to take a virtual course. So if they get into that virtual course and they can't keep pace within the first two weeks, they're gonna get popped out of it. Um, 
but if they are not keeping pace after the first semester, because they're being asked to complete um, one segment of the course each semester. So in the fall, one segment, in the spring, one segment, they would also be rescheduled in the spring if they couldn't meet that deadline. Students that are working very diligently may finish the entire course in the fall, and then they would have the option to do something different in the spring, an additional course, either virtual or maybe something on campus. So it's just real important that when you do look at that contract, you fill it out in its entirety. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Keep the piece about the timeline because it says very specifically where they should be at which point in the semester. And if you can help from your end as a parent to monitor that, we really appreciate that since we don't have as much access to it as say a class here at school. Um, and then I think we're just ready for questions maybe. What's the next slide? Yep. All right, so we have um, somebody asking if there's any chance you could put the 11th grade slide back up. Sure. And then I'm not sure if they have questions about the 11th grade slide, but maybe you could just do a quick review of it real quick, Mr. Chambliss. Yeah, um, so here's the 11th grade slide um, and the courses that would most likely be on your student's schedule is AP English Language, um, the math courses, pre-calc, math or college readiness, they also call it MCR um, or probability of stats honors. Um, and then you'll also be able to choose your third science elective. As for social studies, you'll go into US history, AP or honors um, based off your choice. Um, and then you'll have the other elective spaces you can choose to go into. All right. If you have specific questions about that, you're welcome to put them in the chat or put them in the Q&A section. So same thing for 10th grade is now being asked, Mr. Chambliss. Okay, so for 10th grade, um, you can see the slide will go right into English 2, Algebra 2, you can go into Chemistry Honors or Anatomy, um, which are really good basics if you're trying to go into other courses or AP courses. Um, this is why we highly suggest these. Um, as well as the world history class, which you can choose from AP or honors, and then you continue on with the other electives to fulfill your graduation requirements. Um, we will say that foreign language for the world language, that credit, um, it is not a graduation requirement. However, we strongly suggest it because of many of our students are college bound. And if you're college bound, you're, you're required to have two world language credits. So this is why we do push a lot of our students to take a foreign language, a world language. And then in the event they don't wanna to go to college um, right, right after high school, that's fine. But in the future, if they wish to, they already have it on their transcript. So this is why we, um, is why we highly push world languages to be a part of the early part of the career. All right, thanks, Mr. Chambers. Are there any other questions or comments? You can either put them in the chat or you can put them in the Q&A. Here's a question. So if one wanted to load the 11th grade for a more relaxing 12th grade, pros and cons for that, anything to consider or any advice on that? I'll take that and then Mr. Chambers can, certainly if they wanna load 11th grade, that's great, but an easy 12th grade is not a good idea for someone who's college bound because one of the things they ask when we fill out college recommendations is strength of schedule are they taking the most rigorous coursework? So if they really tried hard in 11th grade and then they slacked in 12th grade, they see that pattern and that is not a point in their favor when they're applying to college. So certainly if they feel pushed to do things in, in 11th grade, we're not gonna hold them back, but we would also then push them in 12th grade as well. I would, we, I would also add, I will, uh, for the other individual, I'll push it to 11th grade so you can see the slide. Um, I'll also add to the, to the pros and cons that to be where we do like to balance our students' schedules so that they feel like they are manageable and then they can show consistency across ninth through 12th grade. Um, because when we have spoken with Florida, uh, Florida colleges, they do like to see that consistency of a hardworking student as well as a student who is able to show quality grades. And something to consider is during your junior year um, is when a lot, of, a lot of students are taking the SAT, the ACT, practicing for those pieces. Um, and having a balanced schedule will only help um, on the mental and the emotional aspect of it um, because we have students who are trying to take high level classes all the time during their junior year 
on top of trying to prepare for college and do the ACT and SAT standardized tests, and it becomes very overwhelming for them. So we want to keep that in mind. Okay. We have another question. Uh, could a student continue with the world language elective if there's a semester with no language? So for example, ninth grade Spanish, 10th grade, first semester Spanish, 11th grade, first semester Spanish. Absolutely. And, and you may find that that's how it works out because of the block schedule. There may be a break in between, but we, we have up through AP Spanish literature. So there's actually six levels of Spanish they could take at PK. And so some of them naturally uh, flow that they could be in the same year, but a lot of them don't. So it could be they take Spanish one one year, Spanish two the next year, and then maybe they do Spanish three, and then they do four in AP. Like it just, they've got plenty of time to get it in, but we definitely encourage them if, if they have a proficiency in language and they enjoy it, that is one thing that colleges like to see. Two is the minimum to apply to most four-year colleges and universities, but some of the more selective schools are starting to ask for three, and even some schools are hoping for four. So if they're good at foreign language and you can encourage them to do foreign language, we would love to see them participate in foreign language all through high school. All right. So are there any special prep courses offered through PK for SAT or ACT? Uh, not at this time, although I will say that ninth grade critical thinking and study skills class, while it's not specific SAT and ACT per se, there is a test prep component into that. When we start talking about test prep, what we really encourage students to do, besides the fact that they're taking those high level courses during the day with their instructors, uh, if they want to do something extra above and beyond what they're learning in class, the Khan Academy is a great program to prep for the SAT and then the ACT has a similar program for their testing. So hopefully your students have already heard of Khan. They might be using it for classes, for a math class or a science class. If they uh, log into their account, they can see all the courses they can choose from and SAT is one of the courses they can choose from. And then for the ACT prep, if they want to do specific ACT prep, if you go on the ACT website, you can navigate to, I think it's like something like ACT success or something. And it gives you a whole bunch of free resources that students can use. We had another question um, that said, what date will 11th grade be requesting scheduled? So I went back to the timeline process. Um, we will be reaching out to the students on um, between March 8th and 19th, working with them to do schedule requests. So please do not have them reaching out to us um, um, unless like we're reaching out to them because they should be checking their Canvas messages as well as if they're in one of their English or history classes, we'll be meeting them in those Zoom rooms. So um, if they ever see us in the Zoom room or things of that nature, um, they can ask us then, it's like, can we make sure there is a time set? We'll make sure to confirm with them a time because we, we do ensure that each person has a schedule. Okay, we have a few more. What is CTE program? CTE is uh, career and technical education. So for us at PK, uh, Mr. Mathian offers several different courses that are considered career and technical. So he has um, the digital multimedia course, and then that feeds into um, the new to us this year, the principles of entrepreneurship class. So kids are, are starting to learn about a business and actually run a business through that class, which is very cool. And yeah. then our engineering program with Ms. Brewster, we have several different levels that they can be involved in there. Um, they can get a lot of exposure, not only through the class, but she also has clubs and things they can do as well. But those are our two major CTE, CTE programs that we offer right now. Okay, and then also regarding science choice for 10th grade, can you discuss the decision of chemistry versus anatomy? Yeah. Um... And add on, Ms. Tice, if I'm missing anything. Um, I would say that the decision between both of those uh, for chemistry, you'll definitely want to have good math background um, because it does require a decent amount of competency within algebra, things of that nature. Anatomy would be more memorization um, in a lot of ways uh, because they are looking more into the bones, the muscles, the joints, things of that nature, and where are those at? And can you memorize exactly where those pieces are? Um, at the same time, I would consider what is the student's um, current interests as well as future careers that they could potentially use this in um, because both are very both are very helpful but 
also thinking about have I taken a, a good algebra class to or the algebra class to make sure I'll be ready for chemistry or am I in it now to make sure I'm prepared for chemistry and things of that nature is what I would think. So I would add on that the majority of, of 10th graders will probably take the chemistry, um, but some kids, again, don't feel like they have the math yet, especially if they happen to be one of the kids that started algebra one in the ninth grade. So then they don't have the geometry background either. So if they're not feeling as strong in their math, maybe they delay chemistry till junior year and that's what they do as their third um, science if they wanna still take it. Um, anatomy, if they are interested in medicine, if they are interested in nursing, anything that's health science related, eventually they're gonna need anatomy. So it's nice. And if there are a kid that's thinking about taking AP bio later on, uh, Dr. Brewer likes them to do the anatomy before they even do the genetics and the AP bio to get that background. So it kind of just depends on where they, that you feel like they excel and what their future interests are. That's what I would say would help them decide that. Okay. And then is May 10th the deadline for virtual only if during the school day, or is there a different deadline for taking Florida virtual school courses outside of school hours? So May 10th is the deadline only for taking it during the school day because taking a virtual class outside of the school day is something that can happen throughout the year. And there is no contract for that. Okay. And if a student has fulfilled their PE elective, could they be encouraged not to take additional PE courses? So um, the way we think about it is we think about uh, what courses are necessary to take, what courses are needed, as well as how do we balance out the schedule. Um, at the same time, the same time, we do not prefer that students are overriding their schedules with PE because it doesn't, it doesn't allow us to push our students um, to push our students to achieve the things that they can achieve academically. Um, and it could also just be too much of a lax kind of lax kind of semester. What I would say to that is this, um, we are trying to balance them so that they don't have a ton of academic courses all in one semester. And some kids really need that break to move around and get out of a chair. So what we're hoping is if they are a kid that's interested in PE, that they choose just one PE per year. So like weights one and two, one year, team sports one and two, one year, and kind of spread it out. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly we wouldn't want them to take PE at the uh, expense of another academic course that they need or something else that's gonna help them in their future. But you, you know, as a parent, probably if your kid benefits from having a break to kind of get out and move around uh, versus sitting uh, you know, for four periods a day. All right, these are all such good questions. Any other questions, either in the chat or the Q&A? Raven All right, doesn't look like it. So thank you so much, Sarah and Caleb and Christy, for this great information about high school programming for next school year. Um, and just so you know too, so this webinar was recorded and the recording will be shared in lots of places for families. So it'll be shared via your email, um, the announcements on the PK website, PK social media, and then also on the student and family services page on the PK website. And also we meet with families each day. And so we continue to share these webinars and these resources and these tips all the time. And so if you found this helpful, please share this webinar as a resource for other families, because this is a way that we can help um, keep open lines of communication and just get the word out to our PK community about programming. So we are so grateful for your partnership and we look forward to connecting with you more. And we hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks so much.